Hello everyone, in this video we're going to set up a player switch system, so allowing you to switch between playable characters. Before we get started I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support this scene will be made available on Patreon. So this system is going to be slightly different than what I've done before. If you've seen my created game series and see how I switch between the playable character on the horse for example, this will be quite different and it's actually a lot more reliable and we're even only using one active camera motor. So let's get started. So first things first, we're going to add a camera motor and I'm just going to make sure it's actually tied to the main camera here and we're going to add a player and we're going to add another player so let me move this second player here and I'm going to give him a uh, red skin color just so we can actually um, make sure we differentiate between the two there we go so let's also name them differently so this is player white and this is player red perfect now on player red I'm going to turn off is controllable that's the first step then next step we're going to go to preferences and we're going to add a variable here and this is called active player this is going to be a game object there we go set this to everything and let's add a trigger here and I'll call this on start trigger I'm going to remove the sphere collider as it's not needed and we'll add some actions type in game object select our new active player variable and we're going to drag in player white so this is going to be our active player so we're going to start off with this character and then we'll be able to switch between to this character and then switch back as well so that's the first step now this camera motor needs to be adjusted to this as well because right now it's just focusing on the player but who's the player because we have two of them so we're going to select global variable and we're going to select active player i'll tweak these settings a tiny bit and yeah that's that's it that's all now this second player is going to need a trigger and again this is just one way of doing it when it comes to the visual side you can obviously do it completely differently so um, game creator trigger there we go um, let's make sure gizmos is turned on there we go and let's make this one in size perfect so it needs to be a trigger then we can collapse this and this is going to be a um, player enter key we'll do another uh, trigger for player enter and we'll do another trigger for player exit now on this character I want uh, a canvas as well and this is not going to be anything fancy just so we have something so UI canvas going to select world space here say 20 no 50 100 there we go 
going to reposition this a tiny bit. And yeah, this is good enough. So on this canvas, I'm going to add a image. And this can be, well, let's not do full screen. There we go. I'll need to reposition it a tiny bit. And I'm also going to add text. And this te text literally um, just highlights which button we need to press and that's it. There we go. Let's do 20, 30, yeah, sure. Then let's drag up our canvas a tiny bit. Let's go out of TD mode. Yeah, this is about right. Now, as you can see, it's rotated the wrong way. Um, so there's an easy fix. I'm literally just do this. And we're sorted. Now, I want this uh, canvas to um, rotate towards the player and there are several ways to do this. I want to be absolutely clear about that um, but the way I'll uh, personally approach this um, is by um, having it rotate with a look at option so trigger on start let's add the actions here um, we'll do look at So the entire canvas is going to look at, um, let's do player white, and there we go. Now freeze rotation on X and Z is turned on by default and we want to leave that on. We don't want it to, um, you know, tilt either, just rotate on its, uh, on its horizontal axis and that's it. So let's save and see what that looks like. And yeah, it needs to restart. And I'm actually going to make another change as well. I'm going to have it look at the camera instead of the player. And um, let's do add that restart actions. And there we go. And as you can see, now it always rotates towards the camera, even if the player is facing a different way. And it's not jittering, it's literally constant and looks really well. So perfect, that's our canvas. I know it's really simple, but you know, it does the trick. It tells us what to do. So back on the trigger, I'm going to add actions for on player enter. And I'm going to leave this open because I just want to duplicate those actions. So on player enter, we're going to activate that canvas. And yes, you could make the trigger a bit bigger, the sphere, that's up to you. I'm going to duplicate this and turn it back off. So on player enter and on player exit. So that means by default, I'll turn off the canvas. And yeah, let's make that sphere collider a tiny bit bigger. There we go. Cool. Now we need the most important actions and um, those actions are going to be um, what happens when we press on the trigger. So right now we have this assigned. So our active player is the white player and we need to switch to the red player. And that's yeah definitely going to be the most elaborate um, set of actions. And we also need to be able to switch back of course. So let's start off with creating these actions and I'll call these uh, switch actions. There we go. So first things first, um, we're going to uh, select our uh, game object action. And this will be the active player. 
and now the constant is going to be the red player because we want to switch to the red player I'm going to add this so these are um, some actions where which allow us to um, alter the camera motor uh, settings and for players like this it might not you know make a lot of sense but what if for example your player is a lot bigger or your player is a horse or your player is a car um, you might want to have different uh, camera motor settings so I'll uh, on this one I just want to do an offset on the x-axis just so you can actually see it changes and we're going to add a property here um, for is controllable I'm going to select this to character going to drag in the white and drag in the red and we'll turn off the white character and we'll turn on the red character then we're going to use a set active because we want that canvas to be turned off of course where we already switched now and then we need to activate the set of actions that allows us to switch back as well so we don't have those yet, so let's create a second trigger. So let's call this switch to red. I'm going to uh, duplicate that. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. We know we don't need the majority of that. So let's um, let's just add a new trigger. We don't need a sphere collider for this. And we'll just do on key down um, the E button. And we'll do a set of actions and we can actually copy over these switch actions um, as most of them will be pretty similar. We just need to basically invert it. So now we can get the constant from player white. Um, I'm going to switch these back. White is now controllable, red is not controllable. Um, we can leave the canvas off, we don't need that. And for now, just let's just leave it like this. Then here on the switch actions, we need to activate that new trigger we set up, but we don't want this to be active while we're the white player, of course. So we'll turn it on, and then we need to make sure this is turned off and actually drag in those actions would be useful as well cool so in essence this would actually be it so let's hit play mode so now when we press the red character we're the red character perfect and then when we press um, when we press E we're the white character again so yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it now this is actually not working so I wanted to switch back a second time and it's not allowing me to do that and we can already see why this trigger is still active so we need to turn that back off uh, once we switch back so set inactive um, that only needs to be uh, this own trigger. The canvas works with the uh, works with the collider. So let's try that again. So now I'm the red character. I press E. I'm the white character. And well. You get the gist, you can just switch back. Cool, so if you want this to work slightly differently that you'd have to switch by going to the white character as well, um, just basically have the same set of actions on the white character as you have on the red. So this would definitely be more useful for if the, the red character is temporary, so like a car or horse, um, 
are just you know something you temporarily take over and that the white character would always be your main and otherwise if you want to have several main characters then you just you know put the same actions on the white character and that's it so really short um, I hope it was useful the reason I did it like this is because I found that it's more reliable to only have um, you know one camera motor for this when possible um, in this sense it's possible we're not changing game type so we're not going to a top-down scene so we don't need to have two camera uh, motors that have the adventure camera as a setting so really short and simple but hope this was useful thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one